Hey, Gary Guth here with BagpipeLessons.net. Let's talk about articulation. Okay, so what I mean by that is when when you're playing a tune like Scotland the Brave, what you're looking for is a certain amount of articulation. And so what that means is, is the timing getting from one melody note position to the next through the grace notes and the doublings. What I find, I find that a lot of people when they play a tune like Scotland the Brave or any other tune uh, that's progressively harder than that, Scotland the Brave isn't a simple tune. It has, it has ornamentation on just about every beat. So what I find is, is that most people that are having an issue are missing the G grace notes at the beginning of the doublings. Okay, so there's a couple things about that. Um, I'm a definite believer that if you play a tune enough times and you play it the same way each and every time, you're more apt to memorize that tune faster than not. Okay, I also believe that that if you play a tune differently every time you play it, then your brain is confused and your brain doesn't know what to do with the information. It says, well, which version do you want me to remember? Okay, and if you played 50 versions of the tune, you're never gonna memorize it. So here's an exercise to put the G grace notes back into the doublings, okay? So I'm gonna take Scotland the Brave and I'm just gonna, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift and hold the G grace notes. Watch. See what I'm doing? It's not rhythmically correct, but but this is a fingering issue, okay? And fingering issues are solved by playing slowly and knowing how your hands are supposed to open and close um, as you're playing ascending grace notes and descending grace notes and so forth. So um, this is just a, so I'll play, I'm gonna play the first part. I'll play Scott and the Brave all the way through so you can see what I'm doing again and then we'll we'll play it again Now, the other thing I did is when I played all of the D throws, I really nailed the low G, the low G at the beginning of the D throw because those are also notes that people miss when they're playing a D throw. They they miss the the low G, so that's just an idea. This is a practice technique. 
Um, you notice if I'm playing it like that, I'm playing every single note and I'm playing it in the sequence um, that it's supposed to be played in. So your brain, when you're memorizing tunes, your brain doesn't remember layers of information. What it remembers is a string of movements. Okay, and so what we want to do is every time we play the tune, we want to make sure that the string is exactly the same every single time. And of course, as you get better doing that and so forth, then you can... Then you can speed it up and play it with the rhythm, okay? I hope that helped you. If uh, you have any questions, please give me a call or email me, and I'm happy to help you out. Have a great day.